This is, uh, this is the Williams helical cam. It's uh, intended for a GSX250, which is a uh, two cylinder twin cam, four valves per cylinder engine. And uh, that's, that's the one variable lobe there. And this is the other variable lobe. And you can compare it to an ordinary cam. You can see it's a direct drop in. Uh, direct drop-in replacement for an ordinary cam this um, it actually this one has got no automatic control or operating gear on at the moment but it uh, it would just go on one end um, at this end and this is the important bit this profile here is the same timing and exactly the same profile or at least to the naked eye it's exactly the same profile as the standard cam so when you adjust this the outer shaft moves relative to the inner shaft the inner shaft and the sprocket stay stationary and this moves And this helical action has the effect of this curved wedge here, helical shaped wedge, pushing into the top of the minimum duration end. And when it's pushed right through like this, it's actually added 85 crankshaft degrees <coughs> of duration to the top of the uh, minimum duration standard cam now it's easier to see at the other end now this is the other end you can see the duration on this end is far bigger than any racing cam and it's actually from where it starts to lift to where it finishes is over 400 degrees or effectively uh, about 345 but just to adjust the cam the uh, outer shaft moves. The outer shaft moves um, relative to the inner shaft, 25 millimeters or one inch, and that's the minimum position at this end. This remains at all times lined up with the with the follower on the engine, and this one inch of movement is enough to add 85 degrees to the uh, to the duration. Another important thing to notice is that these surfaces are parallel to the axis of rotation so the follower it operates through is just a totally standard follower with a flat face on it well a parallel face on it, a curved parallel face but it doesn't need any sort of tilting or rocking follower or anything like that this is in comparison with the standard cam exactly the same the standard cam has the two lobes, two fixed lobes, and the helical cam has got the two variable duration lobes. But there's no reason why it should be just two lobes. It could be like two of these, a four lobe cam, or it could be six. It would make no difference. So it can be any size. But for the prototype, it was just made with two. Um, this also, because it's a very small engine, it's only got this one inch or 25 millimeters of movement to give 85 degrees. But this helical sort of uh, this helical adjustment method, there's no uh, actually no limit to where it can go. It can continue until the uh, the opening lobe. The opening flank of the lobe and the closing flank actually open out so much that they're completely out like this and it meets itself so you can get 720 degrees on it but you usually don't have room for that but in a typical normal car engine with about a three inch bore you probably get enough uh, length to uh, maybe get 100-150 crankshaft degrees of 
uh, duration change. So it's a lot. But you can arrange it so that you've got um, oh, three, four hundred degrees of change. Or even, um, so as I say, so it meets itself. But another important point is that the opening the opening and closing flanks are always the same ones, of course, and so the opening and closing rates they actually don't uh, change, they just sort of move further apart, so the, the flanks are always the same. And the opening and closing rate of acceleration is always the same. As you can see from here, the, um, it's just the same flanks as with the minimum duration end, even though it's a big duration. And as I say, these can come right out, so they're more or less just parallel across the bottom. Except there's no possible use for that. But it, it could be done, just demonstrates the, uh, the duration range you can get.